Hello and welcome. Today's video is all about nuclear fission. And before we do anything else, we have to understand what nuclear fission means. So nuclear fission is splitting a large unstable nucleus. Splitting a large unstable nucleus. And common, common materials, common examples of materials or elements that have a large unstable nucleus or many large unstable nuclei are uranium and plutonium. So you need to know those two examples and you should be able to state them if asked in an exam question. Now, if we were to pull out an atom of some uranium, so if, imagine that was a block of uranium there. If we could pull out the nucleus of one atom of uranium, it might look something like this. Now, this is not an accurate drawing, hasn't got the right number of protons and neutrons and so on, but it's just an example of a nucleus of an atom of uranium. Now, as we said, this is unstable. And because it's unstable, it's quite easy to make it become stable by splitting it into two smaller nuclei. So nuclear fission, as we said, is the process of splitting a large unstable nucleus. And when it splits, it releases a lot of energy. So this nucleus, when it splits as a result of nuclear fission, will release a lot of energy. And this can be very useful in a couple of different ways. But what we need to be able to do is understand the process in a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at that. What we have here on the left hand side is a slow moving neutron. So this is what's going to cause the unstable nucleus to split. There's our large unstable nucleus. The neutron is absorbed by the nucleus and it splits into two smaller, roughly equal size nuclei. But we get other products as well. We get two smaller nuclei, which are roughly the same size. We get also the release of two or three neutrons. We also get the release of gamma radiation in the form of gamma rays, and we get the release of that energy that we were talking about just now. Okay, but that's not the end of it, because what can happen is those two neutrons can actually go on and cause further fission. So they can be absorbed by two more nuclei, and we get the same thing happening again, but this time with two nuclei. So again, the products are two smaller nuclei, two or three neutrons, gamma rays, and energy but this time it's doubled because we're working with two nuclei. And this can carry on and carry on and keep doubling and doubling and cause what we call our chain reaction. Here's a slightly more complex version of the diagram we had before. It's only complex because we've done one more step to it. There's our nucleus that absorbs its uh, neutron. And there we have all the other details uh, repeated a couple of times. You should be able to draw this from memory at least two stages. We wouldn't need to do more than two, um, but at least be able to do two to show what's going on. One more point to add is that we have the smaller nuclei, as we said, as the products. We have neutrons, but important to note that they all have kinetic energy. It's mentioned in the spec, seems a bit random to put it in here, but okay. The, the smaller nuclei and the neutrons have kinetic energy. We call this a chain reaction. And there's two ways we can cause this chain reaction to happen, either in a controlled way or in an uncontrolled way. So we can have a controlled chain reaction or we can have an uncontrolled chain reaction. Now let's just uh, highlight those two there and then take, an ex uh, take a look at an example of each one of those. If we've got an uncontrolled chain reaction, that's uh, on the left hand side there supposed to be a nuclear explosion. But this is a result of a nuclear weapon exploding and that's an example of an uncontrolled reaction with nuclear fission and there's actually a short clip of a nuclear explosion quite devastating, destroys large areas of land. Okay, now we can also have a controlled reaction and that's actually carried out in a nuclear reactor in a power station. So a nuclear reactor in a power station, this is where we have a controlled nuclear fission reaction and this is used to generate electricity. So let's take a brief look at how that works. Here we have our nuclear reactor in that kind of creamy orange color. Inside there we have the fuel rods which are made of uranium and that's where the fission reaction happens to release all that energy. Around the fuel rods we have what's called or what are called graphite moderators and the job of those is to slow neutrons down because we need slow moving neutrons in order to cause that fission reaction to happen. We also have at the top there in a darker brown color, these are called control rods and what they do is they absorb neutrons. So if they are lowered into the reactor they will absorb neutrons and slow the reaction down. Over on the right hand side we have what's called a heat exchanger and that's a series of pipes that allow water to flow in. So water flows in to those pipes in the heat exchanger. It's heated by the reactions that go on in the reactor, it turns to steam and that steam is released at the top end there 
and that can then be used to turn turbines to generate electricity. That steam will be cooled and recycled as water uh, down below in that little diagram there. Okay, now the control rods, they can be lowered, as we said, they can be lowered into the reactor, and what they would do is absorb neutrons, and those neutrons would not then be available to allow fission reactions to happen, and so therefore would slow the whole process down, releasing less heat and therefore less electricity. But we can also remove them from the reactor as well, and allow more fission to happen to allow more heat energy release and more production of electricity. Okay, so you don't need to know the exact details of all of that, but you do need to be able to explain that kind of stuff if you're presented with this kind of information about nuclear reactors. Okay, so there we have it, nuclear fission. You should be able to draw a couple of steps in that process and understand what controlled and uncontrolled nuclear fission is used for and explain the principles of how it works.